I'll talk about the person I met when I was young. In 1980X, we found the bad's top secret material called Albatros, which was never put into practice. Imperial Forces Generalissimo Kilt has seen the plan and decided to execute the plan himself. The Federation tried to stop his attempt by sending our hero, Super Joe, but lost contact with him. One brave man was sent with a special mission to rescue Super Joe. The story begins. Not gonna lie, I appreciate how straightforward that intro is with its plot synopsis. Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Bionic Commando! Captain, it's from headquarters. The command is as follows. Enter into the enemy area, rescue Super Joe while staying in... Touch with the agents. There are many agents in Area 1 now. First, go see them. We rely on you. And now we find ourselves on the map screen. Each of these responds to a certain level. White areas are actual action stages. Red are neutral stages. We'll talk about those in a while. And the tanks slash trucks we see are enemy field areas. We'll talk about those when we get to the first one. For right now, we're going to descend. And here you have four screens to determine your equipment, but we can't really do much with that for right now. Jumping right on in, don't get hit because you actually only have the one hit point at the start of the game. B is going to be your fire button, but you might notice, for being a platformer, we don't have a jump button. Using the A button instead is our other main method of platforming around, our bionic arm. Using it in tandem with the eight directionals on your D-pad can get you various effects I'll talk about more in a moment. For right now, though, we have a communication room. These act as checkpoints of a sort. You need to activate and communicate with the communicate tab to progress through most of the levels. This is MA1. I've been waiting for you. Many of our agents have already infiltrated the sectors you'll be traveling. To contact them, you must find a communication room. Your success depends on staying in touch. You should be able to wiretap and intercept any important information. Ignore all dangers and proceed to the open door. We'll contact you later. Additionally, in communication rooms, you can wiretap. This is going to be your way to get the enemy's point of view in a lot of events. Commander, beware of the elevator. Now we have you. The thing is about wiretapping is that for the most part, it's not really worth it because there's a chance that you can actually get ambushed after wiretapping where a bunch of soldiers will just blitz into the room for you. Now, the bionic arm... When you hold it diagonally, when you fire it diagonally, that's going to essentially be your main way of traversal. You're going to be swinging from left to right, so on and so forth. You can press A on basically any version of the bionic arm, uh, if it's attached to something, to ascend to whatever it's attached to. For instance, that's how I'm climbing here. Firing diagonally and then pressing A will bring you towards the actual thing itself, so on and so forth. Pausing but at the select button shows us the map screen again, but you may have noticed on the bottom right was some pretty important numbers. Uh, one was L and a number out of, I think, 10 at this point, or 15. And the other was P and then a number. The P and a number is your live count, straight and simple. Uh, notable though, uh, getting a game over isn't exactly a game over in this case. We'll talk about that more when we get to our first continue. The L number though is your ammo count, but not really. Whenever an enemy is defeated in the early stages of the game especially, they'll drop what looks like a little green casing. That's a bullet. Collecting enough of those will increase your health bar. I don't know why, but it does. Area 4 is an arsenal. Maybe we can find good weapon we can use. Oh, NES grammar. You're a wonderful thing. 2nd Battalion is heading towards Area 4. Hey, if you're going to Area 4, don't forget to take a flare gun with you. Alright, thank you. Uh, the farther we get in the game, the less you're going to see me using the wiretap option, because I just don't honestly find it worth it. But, well, uh, Area 1 
is relatively straightforward in terms of the challenges it expects you to face. Uh, the standard soldiers are most of the enemies you're going to be fighting, and they'll just go down in one shot. You got these bazooka enemies as well. And the dangerous thing about them is that they have a surprising ra range that surprises you in a way that you might not expect. Yeah, they can fire the rocket launcher at you. But they can also throw grenades, which will bounce quite a bit farther than you initially think they will. One thing I'm not entirely fond of with Rad's controls, even though it makes sense for the game they were trying to build, is you can only aim horizontally. There is no way to aim vertically or diagonally or all that. You're, it's not Contra. And for the bionic arm mechanics, it makes sense, but at the same time, it feels very limiting. I think even some of the sequels would later add in the ability to aim diagonally in some regard outside of different weapons. That's me pressing the wrong button, because we need to press up, and whenever you see a door with an eagle above it, that means you're at the boss room. So, you think you can destroy the main system? You have no chance. One of the three or four different varieties of bosses you're going to be facing in the game is just a platoon rush. These enemies will spawn endlessly, it's just easier to go to the right, and our main target to destroy is actually the main computer there on the right of the screen. So get on the middle platform, and mash that B button to death until it explodes, and you've won the stage. Upon beating a stage, you're given two things. A bonus of ten bullets, which means, uh, hey, if you're ten points away, you can get health up, and an item. In this case, we get the energy recovery pills, which is a health recovery item you can use once per stage. That's going to be now in our third item slot for most of the stages from here on. And we've intercepted a tank, which means now it's time for us to have a field stages. There are three of these in the game. After part one, I'm going to be cutting out the redundant ones just because it's the same thing over and over again. These are 2D action stages that control a little bit like Akari Warriors for anyone who's ever played that game. Uh, but you can really just blitz through it and not worry about a thing because the enemies don't really aim at you that well. The only thing I'd recommend is that the enemies you only see once or twice per stage, like the shielded enemies here, cars in the second variety we see later on, or a blue soldier in the third variety, you want to destroy them because you might notice they drop an eagle-shaped item. That's a continue. <laughs> and while lives are easy to come by in this game, don't get me wrong, uh, continues are useful just due to how this game's life system works. You have a certain amount of lives, yes, but whenever you get a game over, you'll be sent back to the title screen with the continue option highlighted. The amount of continues you have dictates how many times you'll be able to use that option. Uh, whenever you revive from a game over, you keep most of your progress, you come back with three lives. I think the only thing you lose out on is that in a styling similarly to Adventure of Link, Zelda 2, uh, you'll be knocked back down to your nearest max level of health. For instance, one of your health ups happens at 100 bullets. If you had 149, because 150 is the next level after that, and you got a game over, you'd be knocked down to 100. This is a neutral area, though, on the, the pink squares in the map. All ice hostilities are prohibited in this area, and by that they mean prohibited to you. In certain ones, there are enemies who will strive to let you attack you, like this dude. Do not fire. If you fire, the neutral area staff will mob the hell out of you. These are going to be where you spend a lot of your between stage breaks, because you're going to find some important items in these areas, as well as just some extra little resources like that. There is also one that we're going to be seeing next, but you can do a minor sequence break in, but uh, we can't exactly do that. The reason we're coming to this one, though, is that we need to get the flare bombs from this little room here. Uh, best way to get these, by the way, just crouch and press A, because then you'll just reach over and grab it. Flare bombs are these first, uh, technically second sub-weapon type of item in the game. Uh, the four varieties of items that, uh, Rad, or, I think his name is technically Nathan, I think Rad's a nickname, or at least it was retconned to be that. Uh, the four types of items he can equip are weapon, armor, sub-weapon, and communicator. Communicators allow you to use the communication rooms in specific stages. For the early point in the game, the red one's the only one you got. Uh, the sub-weapons in this game are used with one exception with the start button. For instance, if I press start now, I'll throw a flare bomb in the air and it'll light up the stage. By the way, this is the only stage where flare bombs are ever useful. 
Uh, the most important sub-weapon in the game is the energy recovery pills we got from the end of the first stage, which will recover your health to its maximum once per stage. I think even once per life, at that, for that matter. This is M8. Use this communicator in areas 1, 4, and 5. We had to hide the other three, which you must find. And yeah, you need to use the communicators because they can only be used in certain stages. I'll be grabbing them all when they become relevant. Now, like most NES games, there were stages back there. Stages are pretty lethal in this game, but they're not one-hit kill. They do three damage, which is a lot in this game, given that the max amount of health is eight health containers, which is technically nine hits. Uh, you have one more health than your health bar ever says it does, because zero counts in this case. So right now, even though I have three squares, I technically have four health. But since spikes do three, that means at max health you can take, I think, four hits. But spikes, I think, are the one thing in this game that can combo you no problem. You can get hit once, into another, into another, into another. It's like Sonic 1, really. You're a fool if you think I'll let you have any weapons. Prepare to meet your doom. Boss of the second stage is this shielded soldier who has his own bionic claw on his back that can reach up. However, the thing is, the bionic claws in this game don't do any damage whatsoever outside of one eye that you can get. That includes enemies, so this is just knocking me back. Whenever an enemy has a bionic claw of their own, they're just trying to damage you by pulling you into them in some regard. This boss, by the way, is really easy, three health, you just need to get behind him, but since his walk cycle is so inconsistent, I find it best just to have enough health that I can Pyrrhic victory him by walking into him, walking past him with invincibility frames, and then shooting him in the back. And for clearing that stage, not only do we get 10 more ammo, we also get the Wide Cannon, my second favorite weapon in the game. It's sort of like if the spread gun from Contra had the range of two feet in front of you. Because <laughs> it cannot reach very far at all, and we're going to see a pretty good example of that in this next little field stage. Yeah, that's really short range, but coverage is pretty good. Uh, also, here on the field stages, you can also press the A button to use your bionic arm in a little bit of a circle. Uh, that will knock any enemies away, and I think it can even knock away some bullets. But it's just so... clunky to use that I don't find it worth using in the long run. The field stages are not threatening whatsoever, so you shouldn't feel the need- feel the fear of death in them. Oh, hi there. Out of the way. Here comes the leader of the Imperial Force. Make way for Mr. Kilt. FF Battalion, the dog of the Federation. I'll teach them not to mess around with us. If they don't want to shorten their lives, they'd better be quiet. Okay, bye. And that there, that little Rad Spencer, is an extra life. Uh, they're only in a couple of stages in the game, but... Another thing that is in a couple of stages, if not every normal stage, you may have seen one earlier even, was a little green box floating from the sky. Uh, that is an item that can be one of several things. It could be a POW item, which is invincibility. We can't destroy those girders, so we're just kind of need to, gonna need to leave. Uh, there's also, a, it can drop bullets, health, and extra lives as well. Now, I should bring up that whole Imperial Force thing. In Japan, they're a lot more blatant about what the bads are if the Imperial Force thing earlier wasn't enough. They're Nazis. <laughs> uh, in particular, this game takes place, or this series rather, takes place along an alternate timeline where Nazism w supposedly wasn't radic uh, completely eradicated post-World War II, which makes it not too different from reality in some regards, depressingly. Uh, and because of that, what was left of the Reich became its own little small empire. And the current leader is just trying to stir up some bullshit, so we need to go in and stop him. This might be the game's longest stage, at least in the first half. Because we're just climbing this tower the entire stage, but the thing is... Uh, I don't think the stage loads all at once. Uh, you need to use the communication rooms, I think, to even load the next sections. So, this is what I mean by them literally being checkpoints. In fact, if you die after entering a communication room, its exit will serve as a checkpoint more often than not, as will any other door you use. This is M5. We've located the underground passage, which is not on the map. I think we have found something. Okay. What does the wiretapping have to say? Uh, 
Sorry. Where am I? Who is awakening me? I'll be real. Based off my voice there, I read that line is being said by one character later on. But honestly, it could be another character. I am, I'm not quite certain the context on those is a bit unclear. Intentionally so, for the most part. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. Also, these helicopter enemies suck because they don't drop me am any ammo, and that sucks because I, I I like getting more health. Come on, game, give me more health. I want to be I want to be beefier. Now, as for my own experience with this game, this was another NES game I got introduced to rather late. If I'm recalling correctly, uh, I found out about it through that one NES. Uh, that one NES anniversary issue of Nintendo Power that I talked about back during, I think, my Star Tropics LP. And then I picked it up on the Wii Virtual Console and just then just started messing around in it, really. Are you from the Federation? I'm a spy for the Federation. I just saw that Joe was taken away. They headed towards Area 8. Okay, cool. That's actually helpful information. Thank you. What does wiretapping have to say? Number five, is the rocket launcher all right? Yeah, it's fine. Rocket launcher? I like the way that sounds. It's almost like it's my favorite weapon in the game or something. Wink. Very often you'll see me check, or at least during the first half of the game, uh, check the pause screen just to see how far I am away from a, a health up. Because I don't like farming for health in this game, but if I'm close enough, I don't see a reason not to. Although I should state ahead of time that I don't get max health in this game. The max health in this game requires 300 ammo, Naturally, during a playthrough, you're lucky if you get 220. I'm not going to lie. Because that is a lot. And 220 is the step right below the max health anyway. So, if you're too below the max health, you're generally fine. The bosses... Uh, things in this game never do more than one damage at a time. So, you don't need to worry about being too low. You just need to be careful about not getting hit. And that's going to be a thing we can mitigate a bit later on anyway due to some equipment we're going to get uh, next part, I think, is when we get the first piece of it. But that said, time for the boss of this stage, which is this thing. PPP, we have found an intruder. We are going to attack. This attack system robot will just slowly move, to move towards the main computer while firing its own little live cannon. Three shots that go in, the th in those three directions, but they never stop. And once it's at the main computer, it just starts going up and down, but if you stay right below it with the wide gun, you can just shoot it to death pretty easily. At that point, it just takes getting rid of the main gun. Honestly, the boss fights in this game, with one exception, aren't too hard. Most of the difficulty in this game comes from using the swing arm, uh, the swinging of the bionic arm, effectively. And that doesn't become a common thing until the seventh stage. With that said, the pattern for this game is mostly going to end up being along the lines of action stage, neutral area, probably a field area on the way to the next action stage after that. Because we've already seen this one, I think, two times. It, they're not going to, they're going to get more repetitive from here, hence why I'm editing them out after this. But for clearing that stage, we did get the rocket launcher, which is my favorite weapon in the game. You can only have one shot of it on screen at a time, but it's absurdly powerful. It'll pierce enemies in the field area stages, it's just overall wonderful. I'm going to be using it for damn near every stage, barring... No, damn near every stage, except for one that requires a different weapon. Welcome. There's a, there's a beta communicator inside. Time for us to get our second communicator. We're gonna need this to access some of the later stages, but I'm just gonna call it the green one because, let's be real, that's what everyone called them when they were kids. Kids didn't understand the Greek lettering. Rocket Launcher also has a secondary attribute in that the little fence that was in the prior uh, neutral area we were in, it can destroy those. In fact, you can go back there right now with it to get the fourth communicator, but I'm going to save that until I actually need to get it. Don't be hasty. Advance with caution. Thank you, random purple guy. Odd, uh, because purple are usually the enemies, but oh well. Ah, why is there an enemy here? Again, don't fire in neutral areas. You'll just start getting mobbed down by the neutral area fanatics, and I would rather not have that not happen. With that, though, I'm going to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part two, we're going to be heading into area two. 
The layout of the stage numbers makes no goddamn sense, by the way. See you guys then.